Hey everyone, welcome into the Arena Fantasy Series Discussion Portal. I'm your host, Expat, along with my my co-host, uh, Burley. And we're going to be talking, obviously, about uh, the Rings of Power. So, episode four, The Great Wave. We're going to be talking about that. But before we get into it, just want to let all of you know out there that uh, we are going to be talking spoilers in this episode. So, this will be a spoiler review of uh, episode four of uh, The Rings of Power. So, if you have not watched uh, the episode yet, please go and watch it uh, and then come back and enjoy our uh, review of the episode. So, with that said, Burley, let's get into it. Episode four. So, uh, yeah, the great wave. And I just got to say that beginning scene where the queen regent is, it basically, it's a dream, but that wave that comes through Numenor there and just destroys the whole realm. I mean, that was just amazing. I mean, the CG in that was just awesome. What did you think of that, man? Oh, I, I, I love that. Just the opening of it being a dream. You're like, oh shit, the fall is going to happen. Oh, it was just a dream. It open like it starts the episode off really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... I, I have to say something about the real world on this because obviously I I live out here in Japan and we had the, the great earthquake in 2011 and with the tsunamis and all that uh, destroyed a lot of the, the village areas out in the Tohoku region. I mean, that, that scene just reminded me of that big tsunami that came through here in Japan back in 2011. Yeah, uh, yeah because the earthquake was like a level, basically like a level 10, you know. And uh, yeah, it just ripped through. And so, but uh, yeah, I mean, the CG in it was amazing. And it was kind of, uh, you know, for the Queen Regent, it was kind of like a wake up in a sense, but she's still apprehensive and she still doesn't want to support and help the elves, you know, and especially Galandriel in her quest to take on the orcs and to find Sauron. Uh, I, I just don't understand it, man. And, and, you know, obviously her father, and we'll see that later in the episode, he's he's just weak and dying in, in his deathbed, basically. But, I mean, what did you think of, of, of her reasoning in this? And, I mean, I have to say, I mean, the thing about Galandriel, I mean, she acts like a child. I mean, that's Galadriel. the sense I... Galadriel, yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. the sense I get of her. I mean, she does not have any negotiation skills whatsoever. Well, uh, she, she 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 is what we got called called tunnel vision. She is focused so much on Sauron and all that. Right. She cannot see everything else. Like the the right. one guy she is locked up with even tells her later in the episode. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, she's just blinded by that, and uh, yeah, it, it's almost like you know she she's just pouting uh, in a sense, you know, when she doesn't get her way. But oh, uh, she definitely does that. Yes, yes, for sure. So anyway, uh, yeah, so <laughs> you know, she's basically thrown into a cell because you know, you know, she basically says to the queen region look you know i, I want to talk to your father you know instead because you know maybe he'll support me instead of you and uh that didn't go down too well so <laughs> no that that was that that she should have learned like if she's the one you're the figurehead you see you're like yeah. ah your father scored loyalty to us i'll get to him i want to yeah. see him i want to bypass you right in the right. dungeon you go like she, because she is not she's got the tunnel vision she can't see how things are really are yeah and uh... yeah and Halbrand was like chuckling at her again you know when she got down into the into the the cell like next to him he's like <laughs> you and, know, and she, did you get into a brawl i mean kind of like that yeah so. yeah well and, he, and, he, and she and i love it he he's called her out because she's like pacing in there and it's like yeah, yeah, you don't you don't know how to just sit and just let the situation. And, and he even call, calls her out and like, you came in when we got pulled in here. Mm -hmm. You just didn't let stuff breed. Yeah. You went on the offense on the attack. He's like, yeah. how do you think that was gonna go? Yeah, and then but you could, and but then, you could see there. I, I was just gonna say, but you can see there in the image here that we're showing, uh, Ellen Deal, who's standing there between them there. I mean, he, he sympathizes with Galandriel. I mean, he wants mm -hmm. to help her, but it's like he's in a bad position. Oh, yeah. 
So, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to, uh, of course, uh, Elrond, and uh, he's you know with uh, you know the the dwarves, and uh, they're doing a lot of mining. Uh, and uh, the prince here shows him a kind of a mineral that uh, I think has a lot of uh, significance in the story, right, Burley? I mean, uh, because oh, yeah. he he makes Elrond swear to secrecy about what he's showing him. So what what kind of mineral, what is this that he's showing? He shows the Mithra, and he does give Elrond a small sample after he swears, like, you know, you cannot tell anyone of this. I'm only giving you this as you are my friend and all that. Yeah, and what is and the significance of the Mithra? Uh, the Mithril? Yeah. Uh, it actually, one of the uh, Rings of Power is actually made of Mithril. Right. You also, if you've re uh, read the Lord of the Rings book or seen the movie, you know, there is some armor that is made from it. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, the prince was describing, you know, how they could make, you know, superior weapons and armor from that. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was kind of glazing over it a little bit, but, uh, you know, he did mention it. Uh, so anyway, that there some of the some of the doors were trapped because uh, some, you know, there was a cave in and all. Um, but, uh, you know, he goes. Uh, luckily, the none of the the miners died. They were able to pull them out and all. And of course, he goes to his father and, uh, you know, the prince is telling him, you know, I should go with Elrond you know, to where he's going next. And so his father, basically the king basically agrees, uh, you know, to, you know, to tell him, find out what's going on in a sense. What, what did you think of that part? Yeah. I, I, I like that moment with the father and, and because it's like, uh, I forget the, the line. He says like the only, only uh, sense of door needs to trust is your own, mm -hmm. trust your own or something like that. Like I can't, yeah. I can't remember the line. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do like that. And he's like, he's saying to his son, you are ready to take. Yeah. But yeah. he's like, he's like, you trust Elrond. Yeah. But the other guy and the other elf, not yeah. so much. Okay. Go yeah. there. See the tower that's being built and keep right. an eye. I wish we would have got stuff. I, I'm going to say this. The, this episode, the pacing was a little, wasn't the greatest for me. Yeah, there was yeah. stuff in this episode I felt we could have cut in giving us more on the dwarven and elf stuff because right. they're just showing the towers starting to be built and like you kind of yeah. brought over some elves and dwarves because you know they have conflict right as right. they're building that shown some stuff there so i'm hoping next episode we get that yeah yeah well, let's get to the other arc of the story because there were like, you know, these different character arcs and all. Let's get to Aaron Deer, but uh, obviously he was a captive and, uh, you know, the rest of his, uh, you know, uh, elf party and, and those were, were killed off and he was the only survivor, basically. Uh, and they, the orcs, dragged him to see Adar, uh, which in, of course, Elven means uh, father. Uh, but what's interesting is Adar, I guess this is just how I would, I would explain it. I guess he's a dark elf. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of speculation out there. Is, is Adar really Sauron? Uh, you know, uh, we don't really know this. I, I don't know how you feel about this Burley, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just see him as a dark elf. Maybe he's a Lieutenant of Sauron. Who knows? I, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I don't think he's Sauron. I, I believe Adar is in the Summerillion and all that stuff, and I believe he is just an elf that got tainted by Morgoth and Sauron. Yeah. And all that, and like he is, because the thing is, is like, because of all the different books and the different lores, they changed how the orcs were created. Original, uh, in, in one, one continuity, he is the creator of the orcs. Yeah. So you can, but you do see as he has to finish off one of his own, you yeah. can see him crying and sad with it. So I, I did like that, and I do do like the little thing he has with the elf. They're both speaking elvish to each other. Yeah. And then him saying, "Go, go back to your people and tell, give them this message." Yeah. No, that's the this is that's the part of the episode I really didn't like. I mean, because what they really should have did with this episode is Aaron Deer escapes. 
and then he spies on the encampment and finds out who Adar is and then goes back and warns the people. But it's like, you know, Adar is like, you know, you go go and warn the people, you know, we're going to take over the the Southlands and, and you can, you know, be our servants or die, you know, and, and then he just goes back there. I mean, you know, I, I just I didn't like that part of the, the episode. I, I think it should have been done a little bit differently, but that's just my pet peeve about it all. But uh, yeah, I, I, I get what you mean there for me. I didn't mind it so much, but yeah. my, it does that thing of. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the message is. We're going to yeah. cut away, yeah. and then you only get... I can assume is just part of the message, because you'd think he'd want him... Because the way it's being framed, that he's got to tell the elves this. Yeah. But he's telling the human encampment. Yeah. Be like, hey, you need to swear f- fealty to these guys, and you'll, you'll be fine. And from well, what I've seen of this human encampment so far, I, I don't really, I, I, I could care less if they all die or not at this point in time. I mean, it's like, well, they, they, yeah. There's there's three people in this human encampment that actually have any like relevance to the story. You have yeah. the, 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 the elf's uh, love interest, her son, yeah, and the guy, uh, the guy that we get near the end of the episode, who who the kid had stole the blade from yeah and you yeah. learn learn a little bit there yeah yeah so speaking of the blade of course uh you know the the boy is uh with his friend trying to gather like food and supplies from the old uh, village there and uh obviously they he runs into orcs you know and uh, he pulls out the blade and then he kind of it seemed like he cut himself with the blade to make it longer yeah, you know, that was pretty. That was pretty cool uh, effects there. But uh, and now all the orcs are after him, and he goes and hides in a well, like a water well. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, and and you know, later on he gets back and all. But uh, yeah, I mean, but now the orcs know that he has that sword. You know, he has that piece. So it's yeah. like they're 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 in full force after him. Well, that they, that that is one of the things they are searching for, right? And I, I do like that because we did show him, or in the last episode he was in, he did see how blood and stuff affected the blade. So right. he knew right away if he's fighting against these things, he needs the blade at full power. Right. Stab himself, get the blood in there. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I I do I do do like that. He he was that those those kids like I get it they were trying to get as much food as you can yeah but you're like you guys have got to look at it you had a lot of food there right get like get out <laughs> yes get in and but, get but, out man yeah but but we need we need tension and we need so, start right. to pay off with the blade right. and everything right right so yeah okay so let's go back to uh, Galadriel and uh, obviously she goes. Uh, you know, after she takes out these guards and everything and throws them into her own cell, uh, she goes to, I think it is the, you know, the, the she, she goes back to that tower, I think it was, uh, and uh, wants to see the king. But of course, the queen regent, she's a step ahead of her. She knows she's coming there. And then uh, she meets her there. Uh, and uh, you could just see the king is, he's, he's on his deathbed. He's like... Uh, you know, in, in his dying breaths, so to speak, and uh, and then uh, she goes to this. Uh, the the queen regent takes her to this ball here. And what is this called again, Burley? A palantir. The palantir, yes. And of course, she puts her hand on the palantir, and basically, she sees pretty much the same thing that the queen regent saw in the dream. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. What did you think of that scene? It, like, I get it for the visual effect. But here's what the Palantirs actually do. That what they do, you do see them in Lord of the Rings because you see Sa- Sauron has it and he connects to Sauron. Mm-hmm. Um, what they do are all the stones can talk to each other, mm. and so right, it, it's basically like cell phones. Yeah, <laughs> just think of it that way. If you've got one and I got one, we can talk to each other and all that. Right. It's not to predict the future. Maybe there is some caught other book that i didn't read that has this yeah that was redconned in kind of thing but Mm -hmm. from the originals it it was just to communicate and she says oh yeah there are seven of them 
and the other six are lost. And the L uh, and she Galadriel says, "Yeah, my people. I've seen one and used one before." And it's like, right, right. What? Okay, so then you know one is with the elves, so that's two of the seven. Right. Like, so stop, stop. Uh, like, this is something with the show. Like, I'm, I'm starting to ha- get more head scratching moments because I know the lore. <laughs> right. Right. They're changing things vastly. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to obviously the boy gets uh, caught by the orcs and everything, but uh, who shows up to save the boy is Aaron Deer, obviously. And, uh, of course, uh, he's a badass with a bow and arrow, obviously, uh, you know, trying to get the boy back to safety and all. Uh, and then, of course, the, the mother actually shows up as well as they're in the forest there. And, uh, you know, uh, he's able to fight them off enough where they get through the trees and they get into the sunlight as I guess yeah. the sun is rising. And uh, that causes the orcs to, uh, to 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 stand down because obviously if they come out into the light they're going to burn to death. So yeah, and what that, did you think that, of that, that scene? Yeah, uh, that that is another change in the in the books and stuff. Yeah, orcs they hate the sun. Yeah, it annoys them. It does hurt them. It doesn't. They don't instantly just burst into flames and die. <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's a change. But I get it for the show to add right, right, right. add something. I get it. That that one I'm not as mad. But right. I, I did like that scene of him saving him, yeah, and and the mother coming with the little uh, farmer sickle, right, and then you know getting him out, and getting him out. They get out of the forest, go into the forest, and out of the forest. Right, and the sun slowly rising. And the orcs are like, ah, oh, yeah, can't yeah, get them. yeah. And then of course we get back to the we get back to the uh, the tower encampment, of course, uh, with the the. You know the the humans in the Southland, and obviously here's the image of the boy with uh, the guy that you know had the sword before. You know, and he's warning the boy. You know, uh, you know, shit's coming. Basically, you know, get ready. So uh, yeah, I, I you know he was he was scaring that kid pretty 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 good there. I thought. So what did you think of that, Burley? Yeah. Well, he he has to scare him good and be like yeah. And he lets him know, like, you took this from me. Yeah. And, ah, you're marked like I've marked. Yeah, so what Sauron. does this mean, though? What does this mean? Is, like, is he supporting Sauron? I mean... Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. This oh, guy yeah. is supporting Sauron. Yeah. So they're, or, yeah. So they're still, you know, they haven't learned from the past, I guess. Uh, not all of them, at least. So. Yeah, that the, 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 this, this guy has him, and he's... Yeah. He's all, and he's like that, that, and he says the line of, you saw the star that came and fell. Right. That's the sign. Sauron's coming sooner. Right. And it's like, right. You, we're all be basically be ready to serve. Yeah. So we get back to Numenor, obviously, and uh, they're just about to ship, uh, you know, Galadriel off on a, on a on a ship to go back to the elves and everything. And then, of course, the petals <laughs> start coming off the trees which is, uh, you know, an omen in a sense. And uh, that basically, you know, uh, is a sign that uh, I think uh, we should, uh, <laughs> we should, uh, you know, listen to Galadriel and maybe we should uh, actually support uh, each other. And so at the end of the episode, obviously they have a council uh, where Galadriel and the Queen Region are together and they're going to go to the Southlands uh to uh to battle the orcs and so they're they're looking for volunteers and uh, of course almost everybody starts to raise their hand obviously and uh one of them that did raise their hand obviously is uh ellen deal's son who earlier in the episode which was interesting of course uh he was on his uh uh you know on the on the ship and uh, he was like a student on that ship and uh uh, he got uh, him and his a uh, few of his shipmate friends in trouble, and they got kicked off the ship basically. And so he could no longer be a shipmate. So at the end of the episode, he's like, "Up, oh, I'm gonna what, what the hell? I'll just go ahead and volunteer." So what did you think of all of that, Burley? Yeah, well, we we saw that coming with Isildur that he was not gonna make pass the test. You saw in the last episode with him that he. He is not fully committed to it. He is letting his mind wander, hearing stuff. Yeah, we so heard that, that voice again. Like when he was on the ship, we heard the voice whispering out, like from the west. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. that 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 wasn't a surprise. Right. 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 
Yeah. Uh, it, it sucks. His buddies got uh, did, got kicked off this program just because of him. Yeah. Um, but uh, for the, them asking regular people to guard their queen, yeah. Come on, you gotta have some real guards. Uh, like, yeah. you you could have just said said like, hey, we need a, a couple extra people that have sailing experience to help. You know, right. sail. Yeah. Sail the boats, and it's like, even though he floated out of the academy, he knows he's good, right? And yeah. you can bring him in there. Right. Right. So all in all, what did you think of the episode, Burley? You, you were saying you had some pacing issues with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's just I think there's so many characters and, you know, that we didn't even get any of the Harfoots and the uh, Meteor Man this episode. I'm sure we're probably going to get them in the next episode. But uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think all in all, it was a it was a decent episode. Uh, uh, the, the special effects, of course, in the beginning and all were, were amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, you know, it's it's starting to build up, you know, to to them getting to the Southlands, and and we're going to start seeing some real action uh, later on. But uh, yeah, all in all, I thought it was an okay episode. What about you? Overall, I thought it was oh okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are moments I really like, and then there are moments that it's like, uh, you just take the wind out of the sail. Like, because uh, because I'm of two mindsets of. Uh, I know some of this lore and stuff, so it's like you're changing yeah. stuff. Some of the changes I don't mind, and then some right. are like, no, why are you doing this? Right. Uh, but there's there's a lot of stuff that should be happening that we should be seeing, yeah. because we should be starting the getting the uh, formations of the rings of power themselves. Right. We should be starting to get to that, and there's stuff with Sauron that we should be be learning about now. Mm-hmm. And that should be happening that we're not seeing. Maybe we'll right. get it. I'm I'm assuming we'll hopefully get it by the end of season one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, did you feel the pacing was off, or did you think it was fine? Uh, what did you think of the episode overall? We'd love to hear from you in the comments and what you think is going to be happening in the next episode. So uh, yeah, let us know what you think. We're uh, you know we're uh, happy to read your comments and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. And if you enjoyed this episode, obviously be sure to hit that like and subscribe and the notification bell for when we drop a new episode of the Arena Fantasy Series Discussion Portal. Uh, so uh, yeah, we really appreciate all of your support and for all of the content we put up here on the Arena Production. So thank you so much. So that's going to do it for this episode. So episode four, The Great Wave. So I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley, the expert on Lord of the Rings lore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So thank you so much, everybody. And we hope to catch you in the next episode. So take care, everyone. Take Peace care, everyone. Out.